So hey, welcome to OC r and where we review and redraw your original characters based on our bad taste. I'm Raven Moodle, your host and artist today, and here's my partner, codename Rook. Say hi. Hey, how's it going? You wouldn't believe it, but this is like our ninth attempt at this one intro. <laughs> Despite the fact that it's the same as the last one. And it's not even a hard intro. It is not. <laughs> uh, episode two marks the first episode where we're actually talking about you guys' OCs. Our theme today is shape language. Shape language is the principle of using shapes to create clear silhouettes and convey certain vibes for your characters. Circles, triangles, and squares are the basic shapes. Sticking to one of these for big shapes and silhouettes create a unified feeling for your character. Mixing two different shapes for your overall theme can create an interesting design as well as convey different personalities. Such as mixing circles and squares can give your character a sturdy, strong feeling, but also make them feel welcoming, emotional, and kind. This could lead to making a character that feels like a protector, driven by kindness and emotion, to get stronger for those they care about. Characters who are a little more uh, welcoming will have like a lot of like softer hair and like smoother, rounder designs. Where characters who are a little more, you know, acerbic and a little um, more confrontational have like spikier and sharper designs. Yes. Usually you'll have a character that's like really kind and nice, let them be made of circles, it'll be a little rounder, maybe short, they'll have big hair or something like that. Think of like uh, Rose Quartz from Steven Universe, but a bunch of circles. Well, my first thought when you kind of pointed that out was uh, Ida, the owl lady, Ida. who has like the big floofy and round hair because she is super nice, but at the same time, like her dress and also the top part of her hair does have some spikes on it. Yes. She is nice to people that she knows, but at the same time, she can be a little... uh devious to those that she isn't already on good terms with yes exactly she's got the big round overall shapes for like her head and her hair and like the gem on her chest is a circle which is because she's you know she's friendly she's fun she, she like cares about people um though not so much at the beginning of the show but then she's got the spikes on her hair the like sharp chin line the rips at the bottom of her dress because she is devious she's a criminal <laughs> Yeah. Um, you don't have to draw in a super simplified or cartoony style to use shape language, though. It can apply to, like, the shape of hair or capes or clothing, eyes, jawline, etc. Uh, a fun exercise would be taking the three different shapes, like the circles, square, and triangle, and seeing if you can make what parts of, like, a character you can make different per shape. You know, like, give one character a really chiseled jaw, the other one give them, like, a really soft chin, that kind of thing. Um, for today's episode, I actually went to an artist, uh, the trashiest Pada, I think it is. It's Panda without an N, so I think that's Pada, on Tumblr and asked if I could speak about their character, Delta. Um, but before I show you Delta, I do want to talk about why I chose Delta. The creator that made Delta works with two of their friends, I believe, um, to make this like big overarching world stuff. Um, Delta is Pada specifically, but there are a bunch of characters in the story that their friends, like, created. Definitely check those out. They're very cool. However, I chose Delta specifically because one of the creators does a bunch of animations, and they, anytime they have Delta, they, um, get a lot of designs that, or comments that Delta just design is bad because she's not feminine, which is <laughs> wrong. So I wanted to explain why Delta's design is actually really good, and he used really good shape language and color theory, so... We're gonna talk about that because a bunch of people don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Damn, call them out. But probably not wrong either. It's very, yeah, but it's also like nobody asked. Yeah, it is a little um, simplistic of an argument to kind of put it gently. Yeah, it's yeah. I 100% I agree. People do art for fun. They make characters for fun. Do not make creating stressful. Lift each other up. If you want to see designs done a certain way or stories told a specific way or you have these ideas, then make them yourself. Make the art that you want to see. Don't tear other artists down because they're not matching the ideas that you want to see. Just because you saw a masculine woman and thought it was weird that she was wearing pants, I guess. If you want to make a cool kick-ass pirate lady that wears a nice skirt, make your own cool kick-ass pirate lady that wears a cool skirt. And tell other people with cool kick-ass pirates that their pirates are cool and kick-ass, because we should all make cool kick-ass pirates, personally. But I wanted to, I specifically sought out Delta for this, and I actually chose the theme of today's episode so that it could be uh, kind of themed around Delta's character design, because I really like Delta, and actually the artist has really good character designs as a whole. So here is Delta. Oh, that's such a good design. I know, right? <laughs> uh, okay. Delta is one of the mermaids in this like overarching like world that they have going on there's like this whole story it's very interesting they have like this whole powerpoint about it that covers like kind of the timeline but i'm mostly just talking about delta here but i, I will say in this world mermaids are just known shape changers except delta i i believe can't naturally change shape so i'm pretty sure she has a necklace that lets her 
changed from the mermaid shape to her human form, I guess. But it's, like, kind of faulty. That's why it's not completely transformed. That is what I've gathered. I could be wrong on that one. <laughs> most mermaids, I've, I'm pretty sure, like, most of the information is kind of just pieced together from bits and pieces that they've talked about because their story is kind of all over the place. No offense, again, it's, like, three different people. So it's a little hard because they're not telling a story. They're just kind of making this world together, which is so cool, by the way. It's so kick-ass, and I love hearing anything about it. Um, that's, say, that's, such a, that's such a fun idea. Just getting together with some friends and being like, hey, you want to make a world together? That's so cool. I like you wanna that. You want to make some characters and have them be, like, friends and stuff? And, like, they have a whole original pantheon and, like, a whole system of how, like, magic works and gods can be passed down. That's kind of one of the um, main stories behind one of the animations that one of them did, which is uh, it's so cool. It's just so interesting that they made this whole, like... They have a map. They it, It's really cool. They've got their whole world design, and it's great, and I love it. I feel like everyone should know. <laughs> I'm a big fan. Uh, I know... I don't know Delta's whole backstory. I believe Delta is, like, not a wanted criminal, but, like, <laughs> definitely... Oh, like, that's, that's a great way to start a character to summarization. I don't... Okay, so I know that they were... She was, like, wanted. She was, like, unwanted posters. But I'm pretty sure it's just because the mermaids and the humans do not get along. They're, like fighting, killing each other, you know, as one does. Delta may be a bit of a a bit of a thief, a bit of a pirate, but not like a murderer. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's that's what I have gathered. Um Delta also a love interest for not the main character, because like I said, it's a bunch of different characters things, but the character that um spoilers I guess if anybody wants to check out their stuff. There's no like comic or anything, but the character that becomes the god of the ocean they were she was dating them before but then they became the god and lost their memories and then delta rebounded on some mermaid that was a huge bitch and <laughs> now delta's just a cool pirate with a cool pirate crew one of the pirate members yeah. by the way is a silky and i love their design it is so cool a lot of the pirates look really good but delta looks really great and also the silky is adorable <laughs> um so thoughts on the uh <laughs> i would say the story but it's kind of my bad for not uh knowing their story so th thoughts on delta as a character thoughts on, thoughts on their story not the story their story the everyone's story the everyone's story yeah um i really like it it's like how do i put it immersive big <laughs> it's big impressive <laughs> much like the world we live in their story is a big story it's a pre it's pretty big mm-hmm they have like a PowerPoint talking about like the their overworld and the different races and the gods and stuff. And it's very interesting. There's also bird people, kind of like harpies, but not quite, and they look really cool too. I really like the idea of a story told by multiple people. Mm -hmm. And I also really like that, at least from what I've heard, I haven't gone and read the PowerPoint. But from what I've heard, it sounds like it all fits together in a very cohesive way. <laughs> That's why it was written by is it three people, you said? Yeah. Yeah. I will say they do keep like changing re rewriting and slowly planning things out so cohesive is a bit <laughs> well, I mean, i'm not gonna say it's not cohesive but they are very selective about the stuff that they share because they only want to share things that they know specifically which makes sense <laughs> that's fair. It, it's a story that's perpetually being written yeah and that's cool i like it a never-ending story one might say <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> um I like it. Story is, you know, it's more the world than it is just, hey, this one specific character. In that way, I really like it, you know? Yeah. Um, looking at the... It might the, be more in-depth. Again, I haven't uh, delved super into all of them because there's, there's a lot of characters. But, I mean, I don't know, looking at the, the reference that they sent in, they have a little, a, a little a few notes about the character that are really good for characterization. Talking about all the scars that they have and a little, a couple ways that their human form manifests and can change. I don't know. I would like her. She's a good character. She looks so cool. I love the scales on the back. Um, about the design, though, the shapes. There's so many squares, and I love it because they. Delta has this like sturdy, headstrong, um, hard-headed. I guess same. I think this is the same thing with slightly different, but both. <laughs> Delta is both. Um, the hair, the, like, body type, the hem of the coat, the belt, like, the boxy shoulder pads, like, even the way the shirt is cut is all very square. This gives up, like, this really strong and, like, not intimidating, but, like, wall of a look, you know? <laughs> They're not physically imposing, but they also look very solid. <laughs> Adelta doesn't look like she would beat me up. 
But she looks like she could. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't, not an angry looking character, but a character who would be able to throw down at a moment's notice. <laughs> Delta is a himbo from, from what I've understood. <laughs> uh, himbo is peak character design. True. Delta do be drinking respect whammon juice. <laughs> she do be having the girlfriends. <laughs> Trying to save her god of a girlfriend who just, like, proceeds to lose memory and go crazy. And then it's really sad, like, by the way. I was gonna say, when you were first telling the story, this was my first time hearing it, I'm like, oh, a mermaid ended up dating the god of the ocean. That's a pretty good thing. And then you continued with the rest of the story, and I was like, oh, never mind. Yeah, because it was, like, she was Delta's girlfriend, whose name I don't remember, forgive me, uh was just a pirate who was traveling to like this island their ship got attacked and killed by the god of the ocean who they ended up accidentally killing the god of the ocean and then was kind of cursed to be the god mm. so like as their curse was taking place they like befriended met delta they were like dating they got hunted by some shitty mermaid hunters and then they slightly went more crazy and now delta's like sad <laughs> Much like Kimbo's peak character design, Sad is also peak character design, so I think that works pretty well. I would appreciate it if Delta was not Sad, because I love her. <laughs> uh, also, I would like to point out that the, like, mermaid design is, like, completely built up of triangles, and it's a very good, like, danger look, and, like, all the visible scars add to, like, draw the eye to the fact that, like, yes, this character is, in fact, very dangerous. Um, which makes sense, because people are clearly scared enough of mermaids to, like, hunt them, and, like, mermaids we know attack people so if like they didn't convey this feeling of danger and fear it would be very jarring if it was just like the soft and sweet like little little fish person and they were like no they're evil and we have to kill them like that would be so so strange so they actually made them very intimidating and i really like it mm -hmm. but when they like go out and they're like oh the mermaid boy and he's like he looks like a toddler and you're like i understand that you guys have been lied to but also like Use, <laughs> use your eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. Just, just context clues. Yeah. They look like they couldn't hurt a fly. <laughs> uh, as someone who has done very little digging into mermaid designs, I like that this feels like a mermaid more than like what I would recognize as a mermaid does. It looks like a species phrase. that lives under the water instead of like a person that is also part fish. Yeah, it does. It looks less like a like some person in the Middle Ages was just like, "Hark! Imagine the top of a human and the bottom of a fish." <laughs> mermaid. It looks less like ah yes, mermaid. instead of combining two. Yeah, hark, mermaid. It looks less like oh, let's just take two things and put them together, and instead be like, okay, well instead of taking two things and cutting them in half and putting them together, we took two things and put them together in a way that makes something new but still has aspects of both. You know, I really like that. I like that they look more shark-like and more like a predator instead of, ah, look at this, it's a human underwater with it has a fish tail, you know? Mm -hmm. I really like it. They they did a really good job designing her, and she is such a good, like, imposing. But also, like, it's a very scary design, but I feel like if you saw it not looking, uh, not, like, coming towards you and just, like, swimming and looking at you curiously, it wouldn't inherently be terrifying. I like the difference between the mermaid delta, which is very sharp and dangerous looking, and then the, like, human form, I guess, of delta, mm. that it's very, it feels like this is the way that delta wants to be, you know? Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know how true that is, but that's, like, the vibes it gives me. I also like that the human form looks like, you said mermaids can shapeshift for this world, but she relies on a magical necklace, I believe. Mm -hmm. It looks like it isn't a perfect shapeshift, there's still fins on the forearms and on the calves. Yeah. Uh, and the, the, the scars are still the same kind of neon blue or highlighter blue color. That. I think that is such a good choice. I don't know. I like that the human form looks like someone who isn't super capable at shapeshifting but still wants to shapeshift and try and make the jump as best she can, but isn't entirely capable of doing so. And I just think that's really good. It's like a very subtle bit of characterization that shows on the character design instead of it's more subtextual mm -hmm. than textual <laughs> subtextual i mm. also really like delta's colors the like muted blues and like earthy tones of like the leather and the shirt with like the bright orange it's so nice to look at it's like a really good analogous color scheme and the value difference is really nice between like the like bright white of the well off white i guess of the shirt and the like saturated orange and then the darker tones 
Mm-hmm. Draws your eyes up. Also, the bright blue. I know there's not a lot of the bright blue scars showing on like the human ish humanoid design, but it is a very good contrast, and I like it. Uh, also, I really like the monochrome color that the mermaid has going on with all the blues. It makes sense for a creature that lives in the water. Um, also, the lighter underbelly. It, it's like a really good value difference, but it's also kind of like manta rays. You know how they have like the dark color on top and then the light color under the belly. It's just, it's good camouflage. Hmm. Good design. I like Delta. Good use of the squares and the human form. I like that they still have some of the like triangles, like jagged shapes left over because Delta is like a wanted pirate. So like they are a little bit dangerous. <laughs> yeah, a little dangerous. A little dangerous. That is all I have for Delta. Uh, solid good character. I quite like them. She's beautiful. I love her. And I hope she is happy. <laughs> 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. <laughs> good shit. Uh, okay, Rook, what character do you have? Give me five uh, grabby hands. <laughs> Hand them over. <laughs> so I am bringing to the table. This one is done by Kaylee Draws, I believe. And their <gasps> yeah, the character is Bob from their Living with Outcasts story. Such a good title, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I remember when I asked if they wanted to submit an OC, and they were like, "I have this one." I remember collecting that one, and I quite like it. Me too. I think they're really good, and also. From what I learned of shape language approximately, you know, <laughs> 10, 20 minutes ago, depending on how much gets cut, uh, <laughs> I think uh, this character, Bob, is a very interesting way to use shape language without necessarily being honest with shape language. Let me go back a second. So Bob is a creature known as Adruno, which is a parasitic organism that eats life force and energy from others, mm-hmm. which is a little more malicious than big round creature would naturally assume. Uh, One of the things that I like about the character is that there are no straight harsh lines. It is literally all curves and they have a very round and welcoming figure. But they almost, they look very Baymax like where they like, they look very soft, very smooth and very pleasing to look at. And then they'll eat your life force. Yeah. It's a, what are you going to (laughs) do? It's a great example of like sub, what is it? Uh, they're tricking you, right? They want you to think, yeah, like, this pretty... character is kind and soft and friendly. Psych. It's it's a good example of how you can push shape language to, like, use it to change your view of things. Mm-hmm. It's a very subversive way to use shape language. And when you said that you wanted to focus on the concept of shape language, I thought that this would be the perfect thing to bring to the table. Um, he is made of, like, just shapes. Yeah. They're pretty good. <laughs> they sent uh, they sent on a couple references, and I'm a big fan of how you know if you take away they have like a big you know neon green smile, and if you take that away, they look almost kind of harmless. Mm-hmm. But then as soon as you put that big old toothy grin with the sharp teeth, all of a sudden they look a lot more open and honest. And I think it's very interesting that just one small change can completely change the tone of the character. And obviously the shape of the eyes and you know the posing has a bit a lot to do with that. I just I do. thought it was really cool. And this, like, screenshot image that they have, I do really like that the smile is so intimidating, right? Because it's got these, like, big, sharp teeth. But also, instead of being, like, a round smile, it's, like, the big, pointy, like, ear, ear-to-ear smile, which kind of gives you that unease feeling. <laughs> yeah, it's like a smile like, like the Cheshire Cat. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of puts you on edge just by looking at it. I think it's really well done and really good. I also like in the reference that they've got the pointy nails, because it is, like, he can hide that. But mm-hmm. then they can be like, haha. Stepping back to the story, I don't know much. And so what we have is they live kind of on the outskirts of a small town in the mines. And they kind of just sat up there and didn't really, you know, put themselves out there. Of Most people just would ignore them and stay away from the mines uh, until the main character showed up. And that's about all we have, which leaves me very interested for more. But, you know, we'll have to see. Um, yeah, he... He, he, he. I lost my train of thought. He, they, it. Um, he, they, it. <laughs> kind of just a big, soft, lovable, but also pretty upfront and self-serving creature, um, which I thought was very interesting. Oh, and he's eight um, foot tall. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was another thing I was going to bring up when we got to the designs. I like how, out of context, it's like, oh, that's kind. Of, that's just a neat design, but then put in the context of how large it is and also what it is. Mm-hmm. Seeing how physically imposing an eight-foot-tall giant blob of shadow with the only, like, 
real distinguishing features being its eyes and when it decides to manifest a mouth, its mouth. I think that's a pretty cool idea for a design. Yes, I am always a fan of shape changers. Mm -hmm. um, I will say about this reference art, though, where they have the uh, both of them side by side, the one without the arms does have a tangent right there on the tail, which is where the, the line art hits each other. Um, do watch doing that. It kind of makes perspective a little hard to understand, but uh, it's a really good reference. I really like the colors. The, the like bright green is great. I like the green line art which makes the like color like the black fur look way darker mm. even if it wasn't like pure black using a, a lighter line art makes it look way darker by comparison so i like that yeah what he said <laughs> uh, also unrelated but on the like screenshot one i love the little man here <laughs> yeah i that's another point i meant to bring up i love 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 this person's art style it looks so good. I love the way that they do character design, how soft, but also how interesting the human, uh, I th think. This is, that is, I do think that that is not the main character. That is the main character's sibling or friend Maybe. or something. Uh, whoever they are. I love their character design. They look fantastic, and I love this person's art style. It fills me with so much joy. It looks yeah, so they, they have a really good lighting here on this like screenshot picture. It looks super good. Mm -hmm. Also the dynamic lines and stuff. I'm also just a big fan of characters who just have a poof of hair on their head. Poof. <laughs> whoever, this, whoever this character is has an absolute poof of hair on their head. This is kind of stepping out of the realm of Bob, but still. It's good because, like, yeah, this is uh, kind of stepping it away from Bob, but the, Bob. the, like, circle that the hair kind of does gives this character this very, like, soft, like, weaker vibe. And, like, Bob is made up of circles, too, but Bob is huge. So mm -hmm. you're like... <laughs> Good, good, good shapes. I think I'm going to assume. I think the main characters are two siblings, uh, Ellie and Elliot. I think. Yeah, uh, two siblings, Ellie and Elliot. And one of the things that I really like about the first reference they sent is contrasting a regular person with Bob behind them. Really shows just how malevolent they can appear. I don't know. I just really like it. Yes, I agree. Also, just having a person like. Uh, multiple people in like a lineup or like to reference really shows height really well which shows off the fact that he is eight foot tall <laughs> yeah he is physically imposing he is a giant he is a mammoth a mammoth a, a, a mammoth of a druno yeah do do um lineups not maybe not lineups but like definitely draw characters beside each other so that you can reference heights yeah definitely useful i like bob i really like his colors i like the green the green is good Green is good. For such, a, for such a simple color palette, that's really only like three or four colors. It really does a lot with very little, which again is very impressive. I wouldn't include, you know, um, I wouldn't include the line art as its own color, so I would say it is literally like two colors, but it's very effective. Well, then for two colors, it's really well done. You you can kind of tell that uh, he's meant to like blend in with the dark and then like has the like bright shining eyes. Very spooky. Thinking about not knowing what's going into those minds and entering them as a character and then this being that looks like if it closed its eyes could completely disappear to the shadow and walking right by it not knowing what you just passed and then all of a sudden it's behind you it's behind Ooh, you it's, gives me the shivers i love it it's so well done <laughs> oh, dear. um they collect rocks and crystals i wonder if he eats them maybe i know <laughs> he eats uh life force and yeah. energy that's so. that's basically the same thing rocks and life force yeah those are the same yeah the two fa the two basic food groups everything else and then life force plus rocks yeah they're on like your hierarchy of needs oh yeah yeah rocks are above your life force obviously you willing to testify about that in a court of law yes cool <laughs> <laughs> bob is a good design and i really like kaylee's art so 10 out of 10 another flawless design uh because everyone's art is really good. <laughs> also, Living with Outcast is such a cool, such a cool name. Anyway, check out find their art. Someone, <laughs> find someone who looks at you like Bob looks at the Elliot. character and picture. Elliot. <laughs> yep. Find someone who looks at you like Bob looks at Elliot? Question <laughs> mark. Uh, that is all that we have for today. Hmm. I don't remember, I still um, don't have an outro, and I don't remember what I did last time, so that is all for OCR&R. Oh, 